Hi everyone. I wanted to check in today and do um, do a quick book chat about the the most recent book I finished. It's called Stay Illusion: The Hamlet Doctrine. Here is the cover. Can you see that? Um, the cover is somewhat plain, but um, you know it's a looks like a, a knight in armor. Um, so probably you know somewhat appropriate maybe for the uh, discussion of the uh, Shakespeare play Hamlet. Um, this is by um, a husband-wife team. Simon Critchley, I think is how it's pronounced, is a uh, philosophy professor at the New School in New York City, and then his wife, Jameson Webster, who is the co-author, is a psychoanalyst in private practice in New York, and she also... Um, I think she oversees some graduate students at City University in New York. But, um, you know, neither one of them are Shakespeare uh, experts or, um, you know, particularly um, any sort of academic, um, have any sort of academic training on this particular play Hamlet. But what they are doing in this book is that they are sort of taking the play and um, taking it apart um, from a philosophical standpoint and then from also a psycho psychoanalytic standpoint. So, um, you know, I thought, I thought when I heard about this book, I thought this sounded, sounded really interesting, even though I have, you know, probably a pretty limited, um, knowledge of the play Hamlet, you know, itself. I have probably a high school background from Hamlet, and that was quite a while ago. And, you know, I've seen, um, long ago, I saw, um, the, um, the movie version that had, um, Mel, Mel Gibson as Hamlet. And, um, uh, let's see, Glenn Close was his mom, Gertrude, and Helena Bonham Carter was Ophelia. So, you know, this is pretty much, um, other than just sort of information that I've gleaned about the play, um, you know, sort of through other channels, this is really the extent of my knowledge of probably of the play. So I thought when I heard about the book, I thought it sounded kind of interesting. I thought, well, you know, maybe um, it, it will help me, um, you know, understand the play a little bit better and get a little... Um, get a little more information about that. So I heard about the book on YouTube, I believe from a booktuber called Neil Griffiths, but I just went back to his channel to see if maybe I could find um, where I had originally heard about this book from him, and I don't see a video where that would be the case, so maybe it was not his channel, but I'm going to give him credit for it anyway because uh, something in my mind tells me he mentioned it at some point on one of his videos, and I don't have time to go back and watch all of his videos, and in any case, I could highly recommend his channel because I, I usually enjoy um, you know what he what that he um, puts out there um, and the books that he reads, I, I usually find pretty interesting. So um, his name is, uh, his channel's name is Neil Griffiths, uh, and I'll put that in the comments down below just in case anyone's interested in checking out his channel, which I could highly recommend. But on to the book. Okay, so the way the book is structured, um, the book is, there's a, there's a, like an introduction. Then part one is um, really kind of an overview maybe of the play and, and the, the care, the main characters, as well as kind of an overview. Also, I, I took away from a, of tragedy in general, just the theatrical uh, art of tragedy, um, which I have never really given a lot of thought to, but it's apparently a thing. <laughs> um, then the second part is um, the part two is the section of the psycho an analysis of the play, you know, from a psychoanalytic viewpoint. And, um, you know, so this part um, brings in Freud and Lacan. So Freud discussed the play extensively in his writings, um, and the play actually, I think, fed him intellectually quite a bit, and so that was really interesting for me to to find out, because I wasn't aware of that. Um, and then the, th the third part is the, um, the philosophical uh, part, um, where uh, the philosophy sort of taking the play and then running it through the lens of philosophy, uh, such as through sort of Nietzsche, um, 
actually talked about the play at length. Um, other uh, philosophers that are brought up are like Plato, Aristotle, um, Burke, uh, Kant. Um, and so, um, you know, it's really, uh, that was really, you know, really interesting uh, to, to see the play from, from that standpoint as well. Um, you know, what I took away from this book, it was some of, a lot of it actually was somewhat over my head. It took me a while to read this book, um, but just because, like I said, I think the book um, was, was meant for an audience that probably has more knowledge of the play Hamlet than I do. Um, but after reading the book, I have since started watching this movie from 19, uh, the 1990s again that, that I mentioned earlier that has Mel Gibson and Glenn Close and Elena Bonham Carter in it. Um, you know, and I'm already seeing the play differently uh, after reading this book. So it really has colored, um, you know, my perceptions already of the play. And I read a little bit of the play, um, you know, some of the key scenes like the to be or not to be Um soliloquy and um you know i can i definitely can read this in a different light now so i think the book even though it took me a while to get through it took me a couple of weeks to well, about 10 days to read the book uh, and it's not that long of a book um it's just that it's very dense um you know intellectually so i really had to stop and think and then with shakespeare there's so much depth to the language that it's not something that even the to be or not to be um you know, the very famous to be or not to be, that's the question. Soliloquy is not something you can just breeze through and glance through because the, the language of that is so complex and, um, well, not that complex, but I mean, the ideas that, that is in the language is um, just very deep. Um, so it's just something that's savored rather than uh, swallowed whole. Um, I think, in my opinion. So, um, you know, another thing that I took away about this, something about the play, in the past, I have I have really never understood why Ophelia, you know, goes crazy. Um, when I, when I, even when I, when I, you know, was studying it in high school, I think I, rem I remember going, why, you know, now I understand it from a, after the sort of running it through the lens of, of psychiatry um, and psychoanalysis, I can I have a whole different view of Ophelia now than I did um before reading this book. Um, her character is so complex. The, the authors actually consider her the true tragic hero of the book. I mean, of the play. Um, Hamlet, um, I didn't really particularly want to do the video talking about the play Hamlet. I, I wanted to focus more on what this book was about, which was the book was about the play, not the play itself. But, um, you know, Hamlet is another just sort of this fascinating character that could be looked at through different lenses. And one thing this book brings about, you know, brought to my attention was the fact that not only can you see it through this psychoanalytical lens and this philosophical lens, it's been seen in the, in the historically um, as, um, you know, history based in some sort of historical fact with King James and his uh, mother, um, Mary, Queen of Scots, I think. Um, so... It's just been interpreted multiple ways, and actually, anyone you know watching it now, you know, I've been watching the play now. Um, there's just multiple ways that it has relevance to us today. Um, you know, another thing that I took away from watching it now, um, after reading this book, is um, is his mom. Gertrude. Um, so if you're not aware of what happens, so the play kind of begins, uh, Hamlet's dad has died. Um, his ghost comes, his dad's ghost comes to him and sort of asks Hamlet to seek his, his revenge because he's been murdered. And then um, right away, within a month, uh, Hamlet's mom marries his uncle. So she marries her brother-in-law, who then becomes the king. And so, you know, this bothers Hamlet to no end. So this sort of sets the stage for the play. And Hamlet's in this sort of melancholy state because he sees, you know, I think, you know, another thing about the book that really brought my attention is that, to my attention, is that Hamlet sees the reality. The play is about, um, well, there's a play within the play. So in the play, they do a play. And then at the end, um then they're doing another play. So it's a play within a play within a play. And so um, I think that there's this, this multiple layers of reality and multiple perspectives that the play could pivot on, whether you're focusing on Hamlet, whether you're focusing on Ophelia, whether you're focusing on um, 
Gertrude, the mom, or the, even the uncle, or uh, his best friend. Um, so each one of the characters has a different point of view, and the reality shifts based on who you're looking at. But, uh, you know, I think generally the focal point of the play is actually, you know, the main characters. We're, we're seeing the play mainly through Hamlet's eyes, but, you know, we can take it apart and see it through these other characters as well. And I started to mention about his mom, Gertrude. So, you know, Hamlet spends a lot of time being disgusted by her behavior because she seems very happy with her new husband slash former brother-in-law. Um, and Hamlet just finds that, you know, disgusting and, um, you know, psychoanalytically, of course, we got an Oedipus complex going on there. But um, otherwise, um, you could be, you know, I was thinking, you know, what, we don't know Gertrude's story. We don't know. She could have been in an unhappy marriage with, with Hamlet's dad. Hamlet's seeing his dad as some sort of, you know, hero. Um, but she, it might not have been her reality might have been different. So with his death, she may be just now finding happiness. Um, so, you know, that's just another perspective. So Hamlet definitely has mommy and daddy issues both. You know, the ghost comes to him of his dad at the beginning, um, and he's got issues with that, and then he's got issues with his mom. Um, he's actually got issues with basically everybody around him. <laughs> um, but, um... I think that that's that this book has really helped me understand these two main women characters much better um now that I'm rewatching the 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 play uh the movie version of the play um I'm just finding them those characters so rich where I had not seen that before so that's new um I think I'll stop at that um the book um you know I'm glad I picked it up it's not something um that I normally would have read I don't think um but it did sort of it has sort of expanded my view of Hamlet um and so you know I think it did what it probably set out to do uh, for its audience, even though I found a lot of it over my head, I would probably benefit from a rereading at some point. Um, but uh, because also I'm not that well, um, you know, I'm not a, uh, not that well versed in psychoanalysis or um, the details of philosophy to a large degree, but I did enjoy reading it, even though it took me a while to get through and um, I'm glad I did. So um, I'll have another book finished pretty soon. So another, another chat will be coming up. So stay tuned for that. Catch you soon. Bye.